The following program may contain strong language, possible nudity, adult content, or sensitive content, and is intended only for mature audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to Twitter chat, everyone. Yes, yes, I know it's been a long time, and I've, I've been away. I've been bad. Well, actually, I've been bad while I was away. I was in Jamaica for a little while. Again, yes, I know. I'm surprised I don't get stopped at the borders. Although, I did notice a new show called Border Patrol since I have been traveling. I think they got their eye on me, but whatever. I always get the same agent every time I go through, and I kind of think we're dating now. I mean, she's grabbed my balls like three times or whatever, but it's okay. I think it's all good. I enjoy the freebie. Anyway, I'm back. I'm here to talk to you about some current things about what's going on. Today, a little uh, later in the show, I'm going to be talking about Richard Ryder, a.k.a. Will my finger do? I drag mama. We're going to be talking about some things, uh, oh, not with her or him. I'm going to be talking about him, the Richard Ryder. Uh, he's an amazing man alongside of Wilma. And uh, Luba, she's just released a new CD, and that's uh, what I'm going to be starting with right now. I want to start with her song, St uh, Storm Before the Calm. Reason being is there's a lot of shit going on in the world today uh, about the Ukraine and whatnot, her country and certain other countries. I'll get back to it, but let's play this song so that um, we can get off on the right foot. So everybody, enjoy. <laughs> Can't be splattered Tell the sun 
Okay, and we're back. My cameraman and I have a communication problem. We're both probably stoned, but whatever. <laughs> it's in the studio. Things happen. Um, just want to give shout outs to my man boy, George. George, I love you to death, guy. There's just no other way to put it. You have been so pretty for so long, you make me sick. You make me sick, bitch, but I love you. Anyways, I gave him shout outs this morning to tell him I like the way he thinks because you know what? He said something, and this is all going to curtail back to my original government stuff. He said something, uh, uh, not odd, amazing actually online. He said, you know, what kind of country whips a, a person, speaking of the Pussy Riot, the band in, in uh, Russia, what kind of people whip people for what they believe? And not only that, what kind of man does the whipping? Think about that. What kind of person whips the other person? It's, I don't understand what kind of fucking world we live in where that's cool. Uh, <laughs> apparently, if you live in Russia, you can walk around, like my, my girl Carla Collins says, shirtless, because Putin has never got clothes on. No, just pants, and he thinks he looks smoking. But apparently you can walk around shirtless if you're a male in Russia and whip people who do not share your opinion. I, I'm glad to be a Canadian, I honestly am. And this is gonna go back, uh, we'll get to it later. I, I know I keep coming back. I want to talk about Richard Ryder. Let's bring it back, let's hold on. In with the good air, out with the bullshit. Okay, <laughs> Richard Ryder. We're gonna come back to the world and its crises. Richard Ryder, this bitch makes me laugh. Why does he make me laugh? Go see one of his shows and you'll see what I speak of. The guy cracks everybody up. Uh, I got a bunch of info on him. Let me get to it. I'm very professional. I'm very professional. Uh, Richard Ryder. He's my drag mother, so I have several pages of different things, mostly makeup tips, but whatever. Um, his website, uh, let's, let's visit his page, actually. We'll take a peek. There you go. He's a bear, he's a comic, and most of all, he's a supermodel. And yes, it's all true. He's very, very busy and very, very famous. The fact that he actually gave me some time and invited me into his studio for an interview was amazing. I, I'm not going to say that it was free because I'm still paying it off in monthly payments of 1995 for the next 32 years. But whatever, it was totally worth it. And, you know, we bonded. I'm going to show you some footage of that, but let me touch some things. Uh, he's a host of Proud FM on 103.9 Proud FM. Uh, him and another guy, Chris, host the morning show hilarious. Uh, it's a good way to wake up and get your, your motor going to start your day. He's, uh, of course, Wilma Fingerdo is his alternate personality, my drag mother. Uh, we'll, we'll touch on that later. He's an amazing comic. Like I said, his stand-up is to, it cracks you up. He's just so fun and so real that he'll tickle your funny bone. Actually, he'll probably tickle any bone if you want. You just meet him out back. And, you know, things happen, whatever. Uh, anyway, uh, we're going to cut to a, my interview with him when I went to the Proud FM studios. And uh, we're going to cue that up. So I'm going to get my cameraman to throw that in there for me. And uh, have a look at me interview uh, Richard Ryder in his natural habitat. It's awesome. Are you? I am fantastic. OK, I'm cutting in on your territory. You just yeah. ended the show. Yeah, morning show, your morning with Richard and Chris. I want to I'm proud. What's that like? It's early. I don't remember <laughs> most of it. I usually come to around 8.20, and then it's like, what are we doing? What's happening? You wait, shake so it off. I'm going to give away a prize, so I'm the hero. Oh, see, well, <laughs> then it's all win-win. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's not so bad. You got some pretty sweet digs here. Yeah, yeah, we're right at the corner of Church and Wellesley in Toronto at the heart of the gay village. Any good views? Like in the summer, you catch some interesting no, things? No, no. In, in the summer, like it's the walk to work, which is interesting. Because yes. like, invariably, because Steamworks is right behind here. <laughs> yes, I smelt and it. I get I get uh, stopped <laughs> every morning. It's like, do you know where the bathhouse is? It's like, yes, sir. It's like, <laughs> Uh, are you looking for any party favors? It's like, no, sir. It's called daytime, and I'm going to work. Yeah. Okay. And and, and how, how ballsy can you be to try and get hit on in the morning outside of bathhouse? You're desperate. Yes, no that's that's right. like now I feel I feel special. Well, at five in the morning. You're the prize now, hey. right? You're the yeah. prize. And now he's hitting on people that haven't even been in the bathhouse. So yes. it's like. <laughs> A1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's A1. raising the bar or lowering his expectations. I don't know which it is, but I'm getting lucky. It works. Lucky. It works. It alley works. At 5 now, Richard, uh, a.k.a. Big Dick. Big Dick Ryder. Yeah, this is what I'm wondering. Is it all in relationship to the location to Steamworks? No, 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 no. 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 I've been in there. I'm not going to lie. I've been in there, too. I used to work out there. They have a fantastic gym. Dusty, yeah. but fantastic. Yeah, I agree. Well, you know, you I don't think really it gets, down yeah, yeah. The, the, it's not getting used very yeah. often. We'll get into that. Um, yeah, don't go there. It's good. <laughs> um, first question I want to get, coming out. I've briefly read a little bit about your coming out experience. Yeah. Now, you were young. I'm going to let you I take never, it over. I what happened? I don't know if I ever really came out. I okay. was new. It's funny because I think with gay kids, like the, you, we were inherently, no one raises us unless you're part of the clan or the, the uh, uh, that church in the states that hates everybody, Absolutely. Westboro Baptist. I don't think anyone's raised knowing gay is wrong, but as kids, because we're really smart, we learn on a on a geometric scale. That's right. We we are 
hypersensitive to social cues as children. We see people react to little, and we lock that away. And when we see somebody who's maybe a little similar to us getting a reaction from somebody they don't like, we know it's wrong. And so we all grow up knowing not to say anything. So mm -hmm. I, mean, I did come out uh, I was 16, 17, okay. but I had always known I was attracted to boys. So, yeah, you know. there's the chemical balances yeah, inside. Yeah, you know yeah. what's going on. I never had a problem coming to terms with myself. Okay. I'm more, I think I had a problem coming to terms with how other people would come to terms with it, you okay. know, like knowing that this what's is your, always be... What's your family, like, do you have any brothers or sisters? I have one brother. Older, younger? Younger by a year, and then I have an older brother by a year that was put up for adoption, which I never m met, so okay. I'm technically the middle child, but I was raised the oldest child. The oldest Two child. boys, single mom. Did you find it harder to come out having a brother in your family? Like, it's a, no, almost like I your little I, brother's looking up to yeah, you. I, no, you know, I think even my brother knew. I think everyone knew. I, what, what happened when I, uh, my family, when I came out with my family, my my mother, uh, she's crazy, bless her, uh, tried to kill herself. Oh my gosh. And she was in, um, under observation at the psych ward of East General. Okay. Married this alcoholic years before, like, and we didn't know he was an alcoholic, but to give the boys a male role model. And he was an awful parent. Okay. He also had a teenage son of his own who he adored, so we were always like the, the stepchildren. Step uh, yep. Yeah, clean that before you go to the ball type of thing. And, uh, and very, there was a divisive us and them feeling in the house. So when my mom had this breakdown, he took it upon himself to look for evidence okay. for me. And he found uh, the book, The Joy of Gay Sex, under my bed yeah, yeah. and left it out on my bed and then went to the bar to drink. And my mom had called, said, well, your stepfather found this. And I was like, oh, he's not my stepfather. And, yeah. you know, like, I, and well, what do you want to say to me? It's like, mother, you're my mother. Yeah. What do you, what do I have do you to say? want to say to me? Like, yeah. I, I shouldn't have to explain myself. To yeah, you. that's right. And I just packed all, I was doing laundry. I took my wet clothes put him in a garbage bag and went to a friend's house and lived there for a couple months. And left. That was the last time I was in that I house. took a Marilyn Monroe poster and ah, a couple of clothes and some socks. Nice. And left and uh, stayed in a friend's basement with a water bed and I called that home. Yeah. Because like you said, I think growing up, you, you know uh, inertly what you are. Mm -hmm. It's just that you're not sure what you are. No. And you know, years later, like recently, my brother, again, a year younger than me, so he's 46 now. Uh, he said to me, he apologized to me mm -hmm. saying, I wish I had been more supportive of you because he was quiet. And he liked sports, so okay. my stepfather liked him. He was the man. And it was obvious that my yeah. mom and, and stepfather liked my brother. He was easier. He's just quiet yeah. and easier. Well, we're complex creatures. Yeah. We are. When and, you're this good was, looking. If I had been a kid today, I would have been on drugs for ADD or for something. Sure. You know? Okay. And uh, so uh, he said, I wish I had been more supportive or protective of you. And it's like, I don't feel like you should have. No. I don't feel in this side of the experience that that was your place. If they had been doing that to you, I totally would have stepped yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. But I was your older brother. Yeah, but I, you was, know, I was like almost like if they're picking on me, they're not picking on you. But we're thick-skinned, I think, by nature, yeah. as, as as being gay. Yeah. But we're, you're called fucking... Now, tell me now, that wasn't an amazing interview. And I can't even tell you about the time I had uh, actually in the studio with Richard. It was a blast. And if you want to in on a little secret, he's actually in the studio right now. He's in the background putting on his face because bitch got to do some more work. Honey, got to pay the bills. Just saying she works hard for the money. I totally should have uploaded that song for him. She works hard for the money. Never even thought about it. <laughs> Anyways, speaking of amazing singers, female singers, we're going to move on to Luba. Okay, now Luba, what's happening with my girl Lou? Okay, she's got a new CD out, Icon. Absolutely amazing. And for those of you who ever you know, spend time in your parents' basement uh, on a Friday night, bag of ketchup chips and sadness. Uh, generally, you know what I'm talking about. You played Luba, you listened to her. She touched your heart while you touched yourself because there was no one around and you're probably fat and pimply like me. But it doesn't matter, Luba's amazing. She is back in town. Well, actually, she never left. She just re-released a CD uh, and it's absolutely amazing. Her, all her old hits are there, Let It Go. Um, I'm gonna play all of her songs for you because uh, well, I'm not going to play them all. I'm going to play the ones I like, which they're all there. But you're going to enjoy listening to them. She's, she's back. She's got a concert coming. She's got the flu right now, so she's kind of hiding. And the thing about it is a lot of people wonder why she didn't get the, the recognition the rest of the world gets when they sort of branch out. She never sold out to the States. She never became a Justin Bieber, if you will. She never ruined herself. She's still true. She's still tr Canadian. And she's still an amazing uh, singer and superstar. Get on Facebook. She has a profile. 
talk to her, which is another thing I love about her. She totally comes out and talks to people on Facebook. No, like you can just go onto her profile and give her a chat. But anyways, I'm going to play another song she sings. Does she have a Twitter account? She does have a Twitter account, actually. But in all honesty, I got to tell you, that was what I was getting to. She does all of this herself. She has no, uh, what is it, publicist or assistance or whatever. She's doing this all herself. And much like anybody who grew up in the 80s, it gets a little uh, over inundating after a while to have Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. And I'm probably not mentioning seven other ones that kids who are 20 know about that I don't because I'm a complete old bitch. But whatever. Anyways, we're going to play the next song um, by Lou. Every time I see your face, this song was dedicated in any memory of her father, which I think is amazing. And um, listen, you're going to like it. Let's play it. Then we're going to come back and talk a little bit more about Luba. To place him at a body and soul Just when I thought I'd made it His image start taking that toll on me of a brain hurt so bad it almost be your eyes calling out my name so out of body and soul everywhere I go illusion or reality I don't know Now, I bet you that song has a whole new meaning to you. I bet you brought a tear to your eye listening to it, knowing that it was for her dad. And yet yeah, it's sad, but it's still an amazing song. I'm going to keep you guys in the loop as far as Luba is concerned. Uh, I smell a concert coming. I'm trying to get her on a few shows, BETV and whatnot. But like I said, she actually messaged me. She tweeted me and said she thinks she's getting carpal tunnel for the responses that she's trying to get to, again, all by herself. So don't give up on her. Anyone who remembers Lou in the 80s, Luba, sorry, in the 80s, Hang on, she's coming back. There's going to be a kick-ass show coming, and it's going to be good because you know what? Canada needs some true talent. We need something that isn't electronically brought to you by a microphone that sounds like, do you even love? But whatever, I'm just saying. It's okay. Everyone loves Cher, but come on. Let's, <laughs> let's bring on some talent and not that little fuck Justin Bieber. And yeah, I said fuck. That's good because you know what? It's a perfect explanation for that guy. Gets right on my last nerve. Anyone that spits on you from a balcony and then still takes your money to buy his shit music, 
Wow, kids got a pair. But whatever. Anyway, Luba, amazing woman. She had nine of her songs on the top 40 hits uh, from Canada. She's the three-time winner of a Juno Award. Never sold herself out to the States. She has a Felix Award as well. But she's also started her, well, didn't start. She went from selling out, she didn't, and started her own label, which is amazing. So maybe we don't even know what uh, albums and producers are, sorry, think she has produced under her own, her own label. But we're going to find out, or I'm going to find out. And when I do, I'll let you know. Anyway, going to play another Luba song. Uh, and then I'm going to go out on this. So I just want to give out thanks to everybody from Twitter. Uh, people I was chatting with, Margaret Chow, I love you, you crazy bitch. Boy George, love you too, you crazy bitch. Richard Ryder, the queen of the crazy bitches. Love him to death, but he's got a knife and he's just right over there. So I had, I had to say that. Anyway, I'm going to go. Thanks anyway. Guys, have a great day. I'll see you again on Twitter chat. And I'm giving away a miracle. Brought to you by Luba. See you soon, guys. Ciao.